Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to be learning how to crochet the wintertime Christmas stocking. This is the Christmas stocking in front of you, at least what uh, you can see of it here in my screenshot. There are lots of other photos of it on richtexturescrochet.com on my website. So the wintertime Christmas stocking uh, I've labeled it as an intermediate pattern simply because of all of the different color changes in it. But once you get the hang of working these color changes, it is quite easy to work. This is a larger Christmas stocking measuring about seven and a half inches by 23 inches from the top down to the toe. The stocking is worked from the cuff down and uh, features single crochet stitches that are worked in the back loop only, which is what gives it this beautiful texture. For the design today, you're going to need a worsted weight yarn. I'm using the Lion Brand Heartland yarn, and uh, there's about 251 yards per ball. You're not going to need all of it, um, but you're going to need two balls. You'll probably use about 200, 170 to 200 yards per color for this design. You're going to need two different colors. You're also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook and a stitch marker as we will be working in continuous rounds. You can also find a copy of the free written pattern on my website at richtexturescrochet.com and you are going to want to go and find it as later on or you can screenshot this view here. Later on you're going to need this color chart in order to uh, work the design. So let's uh, grab our hooks and yarn and get started on the wintertime stocking. Uh, as we get started, I thank you for joining me and uh, while you're here, take a look around. There are several other Christmas stockings. I do have two other designs that are worked in this uh, same way with different color charts called the Comfort and Joy Christmas stockings and you can also find them here on my channel. So don't forget to subscribe. We're going to start at the top of our stocking at the cuff. So we're going to start by making a slip knot and then by working a foundation chain. Your foundation chain is going to be a total of 72 chains. There's 30, 50, and 70, 71, and 72. Once you have worked your 72 chains, being careful not to twist that chain, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the first chain stitch. You're then going to chain three and your chain three will count as a double crochet stitch. For round one you're going to double crochet into the next stitch and in each stitch all the way around. I like to work in the back bumps of my chain stitches but it's really just a matter of personal preference. You can work in any of the loops that you like. So go ahead, work one double crochet in each chain stitch all the way around. At the end of this round, you'll have a total of 72 stitches, including that starting chain three. At the end of round one, you're going to join with a slip stitch 
into the top of your starting chain three. Uh, you'll also want to make sure that it's not twisted again. So you want to have it nice and flat all the way around. For round two, we're going to chain one. And around the post of our first stitch, which is our chain three, work a front post double crochet. To work your front post double crochet, you're going to yarn over, bring your hook in front of your work, insert your hook around the post of that stitch from front through to back, out through the front again, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two more. You're then going to work a back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. Yarn over, bring your hook in back of your work and insert your hook from the back to the front, around the post of the next stitch and out through the back again. Yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two more. That's your back post double crochet. You're then going to repeat that all the way around. Work a front post, double crochet around the post of the next stitch, followed by a back post, double crochet around the post of the next stitch. Repeat all the way around when you come to your first stitch, you're going to join in the top of your first stitch, remembering that your chain one does not count as a stitch. So you're joining in the top of your first front post double crochet stitch. At the end of round two, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. Now for the next three rounds, rounds three, four, and five, you're simply going to repeat your round two. So chain one, front post double crochet around the post of that first stitch. When I'm working around the post of this first stitch, I'm working around the chain one and the double crochet as well. So front post double crochet around the post of the first stitch, back post double crochet around the post of the next. You're going to repeat that all the way around, join with a slip stitch, chain one, and repeat. So go ahead, work three more rounds of, round, of front and back post double crochet stitches, and then meet me here at the end of round five. At the end of round five, your band will look like this. You're going to switch to your color B at the end of the round five. So to do that, I have one stitch remaining, which is my back post double crochet. I'm going to yarn over using my color A, insert my hook from the back to the front to the back, around the post of that next stitch yarn over draw up a loop. I'm going to yarn over and draw through two loops then drop my color A and for this pattern you can leave your yarn attached you're not going to fasten off we're going to carry it up on the inside of our work as we go then place your color B on your hook and pull through and then using your color B join with a slip stitch into the first stitch you're now all set to continue working with your color B. So for the next two rounds, rounds uh, six and seven, you're going to continue working with the color B and working in the back loop only, single crochet in each stitch all the way around. To find your back loop, you have a loop that's closest to you here in the front and one back there in the back when you look at the top of your stitch. This loop at the back, the furthest away from you, is your back loop only. So you're going to insert your hook under that stitch, yarn over, and pull through. You're going to then work your single crochet in each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, chain one, 
and repeat single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch all the way around. When you come to the end of that second round, round seven, you're going to then be moving over and following our chart and our chart begins with color A. So at the end of round seven, you're going to join your color A. I'll, uh, I'll just remind you how to do that when I come all the way around at the end of round seven. When you come around at the end of round seven, as I mentioned, we're going to be switching back to our color A. So insert your hook in the back loop only of that final stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. You're going to drop your color B, pick up your color A, which should still be hanging on down in behind your work and carefully uh, pull it up and pull through. And that's all you're going to do for changing your colors. Uh, here in this round. You're then going to join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. Now for rounds 8 through to round 42. You're going to begin following the color chart that I've provided on richtexturescrochet.com. I'll also bring it here in the screen and if I can get the full chart in uh, you are welcome to screenshot it. Okay, so I'll hold it here for just a minute. You're going to start following this chart and uh, again, screenshot it if you'd like or you ha can head over to richtexturescrochet.com and you can download and print the photo of the chart from there if you would like. So we're going to start following this chart and a couple things as we begin. When you work this pattern, you are going to work beginning at the top of your chart. So up at the top of round uh, 35, okay, or number 35, row 35 on your chart. That's because we're working from the cuff, so we're actually going to be working the chart as though it is upside down, okay? So if it helps, turn the chart upside down, and then you're going to be starting in the bottom corner. But if it's right side up, Again, you'll want to be starting up in the top corner. Each of the white boxes represents your color A. Each of the black boxes represents your color B. When you are working, each box is one single crochet stitch. Okay, so you can see for this first round here up at the top, we're going to be simply working one round all in our color A. One more thing to note when you're working your chart, you are always going to work from the same direction. So I'm always working from right to left or left to right. It doesn't matter which way as long as you are consistent. Uh, this is uh, just because we are working around, so you can imagine we're going around and then back and around, back and around in each of uh, each of these rows. So, uh, as I mentioned, our first round is simply one round in color A. So we're going to, we've already switched to our color A. Continue working in the back loop only and work one single crochet in your color A in each stitch all the way around. You'll note on your chart that your next row is, or next two rows, is two full rows in color B. So at the end of your color A round, you're going to be switching to your color B. So I'm here at the end of my first round of my chart. I'm going to switch back to my color B because I see that the next round of my chart is worked in color B. Join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. Chain one. 
So next, according to my chart, I'm working two rounds in color B. So again, we're continuing to work in the back loop only of each stitch all the way around single crochet in each stitch. Join with a slip stitch in the top of your first stitch, chain one, and repeat. At the end of the second round of your color B, we're going to be uh, continuing on in our color B as we can see from the start of our chart. So go ahead, work two rounds in color B. At the end of my second round of color A, I'm returning over to my chart. I'm reading my chart from right to left. Again, it doesn't matter. You can go from left to le right if you'd like. Uh, I see that my first stitch is a color B, but then the next two stitches are color A and then B again. So to work this little section here and then continuing on, I'm going to be switching back and forth between my two colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one. That first stitch is a color B. So I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over and drop a loop. My next stitch is color A, so drop the color B, pick up the color A, which is just in behind, place it on your hook and pull through. I'm going to, as I work, very carefully and gently pull the non-working yarn in behind my work and work over top of it. So according to my chart, my next two stitches are in color A. So working in the back loop only, single crochet, the first stitch, and then the second stitch, and I'm switching back to my color B, so insert my hook, yarn over, draw up a loop, drop my color A again, pick up color B, place it on my hook, and pull through. Next is one stitch in color B. Insert my hook, yarn over, draw up a loop, drop color B, pick up color A, and pull through. Next, two stitches in color A. So the first stitch in the back loop only, single crochet, and the second stitch, but this time switching to my color B, just like so. Next, three stitches in color B. So one, two, and three, but in my third, I'm switching back to color A, like so. Work two stitches in color A, followed by one stitch in color B. So this is how you're going to work this color chart for your stocking. I'm not going to work the whole chart in this video, but again, head over to richtexturescrochet.com and you can print off the chart from there or just rewind a little bit in this video and you can screenshot it from there. But you're going to continue following the pattern for all of the rows of the chart right down to your bottom corner, which is your box 1-1. One, one. And um, yeah, just continue changing colors as we have done here, always working in the same direction. So for instance, from right to left or always from left to right, it's up to you. And then once you have completed this final row one down here at the bottom, you can meet me back here and we're going to work the rest of the stocking together. 
Once you have worked through to the end of your chart, so you'll have worked through to the end of round 42, which is down to box 1-1 on your stocking. This is what your work from the beginning is going to look like. If you turn it right side up, you'll see your nice little Christmas trees there. So at the end of your round 42, you ha will have switched back to your color B. So you've ended on a color A round, switch back to your color B for rounds 43 and 44 with your color B. You're simply going to single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch all the way around. You can go ahead and fasten off at this time your color A. You are going to pick it up later on again, uh, but uh, you can go ahead and fasten it off. At the end of round 44, so once you've finished your second round of color B, you can fasten off your color B and weave in your ends and you'll be all set to start the stocking heel. So meet me back here after you've worked two rounds in your color B. At the end of your round 44, you can go ahead, fasten off your color B, and we're then set to work our heel of our stocking. So what we're going to do for the heel is we're going to find the back where we've joined with a slip stitch into this first stitch. You're then going to count 10 stitches to the right and join our color A with a slip stitch. So we have our stitch where we joined right here. We're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And into this stitch, you can work under both loops. You're going to join your yarn and chain one. You're then all set to begin row one. Our heel is going to be worked in rows. For row one, with your color A and working under both loops at the top, you're going to single crochet into the same stitches joining and into each of the next 20 stitches. So we're working under both loops, single crochet in that first stitch, and in each of the next 20 stitches, you're going to have a total then of 21 stitches. So you're going to leave the remaining stitches unworked. Twenty and 21. So once you have a total of 21 stitches, you're going to chain one and turn, leaving those remaining stitches unworked. You're then going to work rows two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So seven more rows of single crochets in each stitch all the way across. So working under both loops, single crochet into that first stitch and then into each stitch all the way across. And you want to work a total of seven more rows. At the end of each row, chain one, turn your work and repeat. Once you have reached the end of row eight, so you have eight rows in total of single crochet stitches uh, that are worked in color A, you can meet me back here.
At the end of row eight, your heel's going to look like this. We're now going to work a little bit of heel shaping. So what we're going to do is we're going to chain one and turn. You're then going to single crochet into each of the next 16 stitches. So beginning with the first stitch, a total of 16 stitches. You will have five stitches remaining, but you're going to chain one and turn, leaving those remaining stitches unworked. You're then going to single crochet into each of the next 11 stitches, beginning with that first stitch. chain one and turn leaving the five remaining stitches unworked. For row 11 we're going to single crochet into each of the next 11 stitches so beginning in that first stitch You're then going to jump down a little bit and into the next stitch uh, we're going one, two, into three rows below here, so below your second two rows down, you're going to single crochet into the next stitch. So this is the next stitch on row eight, you're going to jump down, single crochet into that next stitch on row eight and slip stitch into the next stitch. You will now have 12 single crochet stitches. You can then turn your work and you don't need to chain one. For row 12 we're going to skip the first slip stitch and then single crochet into each of the next 12 stitches. You're then going to jump down and into that next row down below your second, down below your two rows below, you're going to work a single crochet and then slip stitch into the next stitch. You can then turn, remain, leaving the remaining stitches unworked. For row 13, you're going to skip the first slip stitch and single crochet into each of the next 13 stitches. Then jumping down into your next stitch, down on row 8, single crochet into that next stitch 
and slip stitch into the next. Turn your work, leaving those remaining stitches unworked. For row 14, skip the first slip stitch, single crochet into each of the next 14 stitches. Jump down to your next stitch down below, single crochet into that next stitch, and slip stitch into your next. Turn your work. For row 15, skip the slip stitch, single crochet into each of the next 15 stitches. Skip down into your next stitch down below, two rows below, and single crochet into that next stitch. You're then simply going to turn, there's no slip stitch here. For row 16, you're going to single crochet into each of the next 16 stitches. So that includes that first single crochet and then into each of the next 15, so 16 all together. Single crochet down into the next stitch, two rows below. And we're now going to simply continue working by turning our stocking so that we're working along this rough edge. And we're going to complete row 16 by working eight single crochets evenly along this edge. So there's one, there's no pretty places to put your hook so you're just inserting it where it's where it feels comfortable we want eight in total there's two three four five six seven and eight you're then going to slip stitch into the next stitch on your sock body. Chain one and turn. For row 17, you're going to skip the slip stitch and single crochet into each of the next 25 stitches.
You're then going to turn your work and just as you did before, you're going to work eight single crochet stitches along the side of your heel. Again, spreading them evenly out. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. You're then going to slip stitch into the next stitch on your sock body and then at this time you can fasten off your color A. Go ahead and weave in your ends. Once you have fastened off and woven in all of your ends, this is what your heel is going to look like when it's folded. So what you're going to do is you're then going to fold your heel as I have done here and we want to find the back stitch. At this time we're going to start working on our foot. So we're going to find that back stitch, that back center and join with a slip stitch your color B. You can then chain one. Now working with color B and you want to make sure that your right side is facing, working in the back loop only, you're going to single crochet into each of the next 16 stitches. So there's one, Once you've single crocheted in each of the next 16 stitches, you should have one stitch remaining on your heel. If you don't, you can go back up and adjust. You're then going to work a single crochet three together over the next single crochet, slip stitch, and single crochet on the sock body. So continue working in the, um, you can work under both loops here. You're going to single uh, crochet three together over the next single crochet, the slip stitch, and single crochet. So insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, drop a loop, into the next slip stitch or into the next stitch where that slip stitch joins, insert your hook, yarn over, drop a loop, then into the next stitch on your sock body, insert your hook, yarn over, drop a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all of those loops. You'll want to make sure that this stitch is fairly tight. You're then going to single crochet, working in the back loop only, of each of the next 47 stitches. So this is going to be bring you along the top cuff of your sock. Continue working in the back loop only. Once you've single crocheted in each of the next 47 stitches, you'll be back. You'll have one stitch remaining here on your cuff, your slip stitch, and then your next stitch. We're going to work a single crochet, three together over these next three stitches. So under both loops, insert your hook in the next single crochet, yarn over, drop a loop. Insert your hook in the next slip stitch, 
or space where the slip stitch joins. Yarn over, drop a loop, and then into the next stitch on your heel, yarn over, draw up a loop, four loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all four. You're then going to continue working in the back loop only and single crochet into each of the final stitches until you come to your first stitch. There's 15 stitches. You're then going to join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. For round two of your foot, you're going to chain one, then working in the back loop only, single crochet into each of the next 15 stitches. You're then going to work a single crochet, three stitches together. This time you can work it working in the back loops only over the next three stitches. You're then going to single crochet into each of the next 45 stitches working in the back loop only. Once you've worked a single crochet in the back loop only of each of the next 45 stitches, you're going to work a single crochet three together over the next three stitches, followed by one single crochet in the back loop only of each of the next 14 stitches. And join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. For round three, chain one. Working in the back loop only, you're going to single crochet into each of the next 14 stitches, starting with that first stitch. Then single crochet three stitches together. Now single crochet working in the back loop only of each of the next 43 stitches.
Once you've worked a single crochet in each of the next 43 stitches, you're going to single crochet three stitches together in your back loop only and finish off this round by working a single crochet in the back loop only of each of the next 13 stitches. Now at this time, we're not going to join with a slip stitch. Instead, we're going to work continuous rounds. So at this time, you're going to pick up your stitch marker and you're going to work rounds four through to 29. And by simply working a single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch all the way around. So mark that first stitch, single crochet in each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, do not join, but continue working uh, in continuous rounds, marking that first stitch and moving the stitch marker as your work progresses. You're going to work through to the end of round 29. So if you're going to be counting your rows, or your rounds. You can start here at this first round of your sock foot and you should have a total of 29 rounds uh, by the time you are complete uh, completed this section of the foot and at the end of round 29 you are going to switch back to your color A. So go ahead work these next 29 rounds and then you can meet me back here or through to the end of round 29, sorry, and then meet me back here. Once you have worked all the way through to round 29 on your foot, you have your heel here all the way down. You're then going to join with a slip stitch under both loops in your next stitch, and you can then fasten off your color B. Now taking your color A, you're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch. And you can join under both loops in any stitch. And chain one. We're now going to work our toe and for the toe for rounds 30, 31, 32, and 33, for the next four rounds, we're going to continue working rounds of single crochet stitches in the back loop only. So once again, working in the back loop only, single crochet into that first stitch and then in each stitch all the way around. At this time, if you'd like, you can either join with a slip stitch or you can continue to use your stitch marker and mark that first stitch and move your stitch uh, marker as your work progresses. So you're going to go ahead and with your color A, work four rounds of single crochet stitches in the back loop only and then meet me back here. At the end of round 33, you can join with the slip stitch under both loops of your first stitch. We're now going to continue working the toe and you can continue working in the back loop only and we're going to start our decrease rounds. So for round 34, we're going to chain one. Working in the back loop only, you're going to single crochet into each of the next seven stitches. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. 
You're then going to single crochet two stitches together. So insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and draw through all three loops. That's your single crochet two together. You're then going to repeat that. Work one single crochet into each of the next seven stitches. Then work a single crochet, two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of this round, you'll have a total of 64 stitches. At the end of round 34, you've joined with a slip stitch. In the first stitch, you're going to chain one. For round 35, continue working in the back loop only and you're going to single crochet into each of the next six stitches. And then single crochet two stitches together. Repeat that, single crochet into each of the next six stitches. and then single crochet two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around and join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of your round 35 you'll have a total of 56 stitches. For round 36 you're going to chain one, working in the back loop only, single crochet into each of the next five stitches. Next, single crochet, two together. You're going to repeat that, single crochet, we're working in the back loop only in each of the next five stitches. And single crochet, two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around and at the end of this round you'll have a total of 48 stitches. For round 37, chain 1, working in the back loop only single crochet into each of the next 4 stitches. And single crochet 2 stitches together. You're going to repeat that single crochet in the back loop only of each of the next four stitches. And single crochet two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around. Join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. And at the end of round 37 you'll have a total of 40 stitches. At the end of round 37, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and chain one. For round 38, you're going to single crochet into each of the next three stitches, working in the back loop only. And then single crochet two stitches together. Repeat that, single crochet into each of the next three stitches working in the back loop only and single crochet two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around and at the end of round 38 you'll have a total of 32 stitches. At the end of round 38 join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and chain one. For round 30 9, work one single crochet in each of the next two stitches, working in the back loop only. 
followed by a single crochet two stitches together. You're going to repeat that single crochet into each of the next two stitches followed by a single crochet two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around when you come to your first stitch. Join with the slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of this round you'll have a total of 24 stitches. For round 40, you're going to chain one, single crochet into the next stitch, and then single crochet two stitches together. Repeat that, single crochet in the next stitch, and single crochet two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around and join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of this round, you'll have a total of 16 stitches. For round 41, you're going to chain one and you're going to single crochet two stitches over each uh, stitch all the way around. So you're still working in your back loop only simply working single crochet two togethers all the way around. At the end of this round you're going to have a total of eight stitches and you can join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. So once you come all the way around, join with the slip stitch in the first stitch. You have one round remaining. For round 42, you're going to chain one and now working under both loops, single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So at the end of this round, once again, you're still going to have eight stitches. When you come to that first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. You can then fasten off, leaving a little bit of a long tail. You can then go ahead and weave in any ends, and you're going to sew then the top or the toe of your sock closed. So you'll have a small opening here. What I like to do is just turn your sock inside out first, just so that if there is any seam, the seam is on the bottom, on the inside. So turn it inside out. And you're going to take your yarn and needle and simply thread it in and out through that top round of stitches. all the way around, in and out, just through the tops of that last round. When you come back to your first stitch, you're simply going to pull that center closed. And then I like to fasten with just a little bit of a knot and then you're going to weave in your end. If 
fasten off, turn your stocking right side out, and I'll see if I can pull it back just a little bit here. Your winter time stocking is then complete. So thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial on how to make the winter time stocking. Once again, I invite you to subscribe, take a look around, and enjoy all the free crochet patterns that you see here. If you happen to make one of these items, feel free to tag Rich Textures Crochet on social media because I always love to admire your work. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, happy crocheting. Bye. Mm -hmm.